Interpersonal communication refers to communication with or between persons who approach one another as individuals in a relationship. Interpersonal communication addresses all kinds of relationships, from workplace relationships, romantic relationships, and even relationships in the family. For this video, we will be sticking to mainly romantic relationships to describe the differences in the interaction stages. We will begin with stage one, initiating. Initiating is where partners make their first communication contact. A couple may initiate a relationship by exchanging a simple greeting. The tendency to let our perception of one positive trait, like attractiveness, influence our perception of other positive traits, like intelligence or moral fiber, is called the halo effect. It was like something from an old movie, where the sailor sees the girl across the crowded dance floor, turns to his buddy, and says, See that girl? I'm going to marry her someday. By contrast, we may assume that because someone is not physically attractive to us, she or he is also unpleasant to be around. This is called the horns effect. Hyperpersonal communication are situations when the affection, emotion, and intimacy that develops through computer-mediated communication equals or surpasses what happens face to face. The poem, don't be jealous that I've been chatting online with babes all day. A survey conducted on 2,277 American adults found that 18 to 24 year olds sent or received an average of 109.5 text messages per day, which works out to be more than 3,200 text messages per month. Physical attraction refers to the degree to which you find the bodily traits of another person pleasing and desirable. A person's physical appearance is often the first thing you notice about him or her. Social attractiveness is measured by an individual's actions and personality. If confidence and assertiveness are attractive qualities to you, you may be drawn to someone whom you have seen displaying these attributes. In the experimenting stage, partners probe to see if there is common ground between them. They may ask questions to learn about interests, hobbies, backgrounds, and lifestyles. Beginning in the initiating stage, the social penetration theory involves peeling back the layers of personality of people, much like the act of peeling an onion. As you disclose more information, you get closer to the core. An onion is an especially good analogy, as by the time the core is reached, you've probably begun to cry. Ogres are like onions. They stink? Yes. No. Oh, they make you cry? No. Oh, you leave them out in the sun, they get all brown, start sprouting little white hair. No. Layers. Onions have layers. Ogres have layers. Onions have layers? You get it. We both have layers. The intensifying stage is like an intense experimental stage. This is the point where you develop greater intimacy and exchange a greater number and depth of self-disclosures. This is also the point where you start testing out labels like boyfriend or girlfriend. You might remember the intensifying stage when you were younger by the endless hours you spent learning everything you could about the person by talking, texting, instant messaging, or video chatting throughout the night to the point where you both are starting to say, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, okay. No, you hang up. No, you, okay, okay. One, two, three. Well, you didn't hang up either. She didn't hang up. <laughs> okay, no. No, you hang up. You. 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 you're talking to me <laughs> so now you and your significant other have already developed begun developing a relational culture which is defined as a unique private world constructed and sustained by partners in a relationship each relational culture has its own relational climate consider your group of friends you probably have relationships that are usually warm and sunny but occasionally have stormy days Stop! Finally, go! Go then! 
Some relational climates are vital and can shift in an instant while others are more consistent. Relational climate defines the overall emotional feeling or temperature of the relationship. As you can imagine, relational climates may be positive or negative. Communication determines the overall positive or negative tone of each relationship. Confirming communication refers to messages and interactions that make people feel valued and respected. With all I got is your hand in my hand, baby I could die a happy man. While disconfirming communication refers to messages and interactions that make people feel devalued and disrespected. You seem like you've got it totally together, but you're actually really emotionally damaged. Also, you have like really big eyes, and that freaks me out sometimes. Thank you. Where is my desk? That is weird. This is not funny. This is totally unprofessional. Okay, well, you're the one who lost the desk. I didn't lose my desk. Okay, calm down. Where was the last place you saw it? Okay, who moved my desk? I think you should retrace your steps. Okay, I am going to tell Michael. Recent research has identified interpersonal communication skills as critical attributes for new employees and more experienced workers seeking prom promotion. However, despite the significance of interpersonal communication in the workplace, our knowledge of these skills and how they may be taught is limited. Back up. Hot, red hot, hot, very hot. Research reports that roughly 40% of organizational members have been involved in a workplace romance, and 19% of those are receptive to engaging in one. Such workplace romances occur between two members of an organization where sexual attraction is present, affection is communicated, and both members recognize the relationship to be something more than just professional and platonic. Let's make it official. I thought we were official. No, Facebook official. You could easily think of integrating as the Facebook official stage. In the integrating stage, Partners engage in communication that weaves their lives together and solidifies their status as a couple. I didn't invite her. You didn't invite her? No. That's worse. That's some girlfriend. Some I have a girlfriend. Okay, well, I'm gonna buzz her in. Don't buzz her in. Don't buzz her in. I'm gonna buzz her in. Partners may go from single to in a relationship on social networking sites. Language often includes more inclusive pronouns like we and us and assumes a shared future such as what are we doing this weekend? You may even find that friends begin referring to the two of you as a unit rather than as two separate people. Aww. Bonding communication involves a public and formal, traditionally legal declaration that two have become one. A couple communicates their deep commitment to one another to the rest of the world. Bonding rituals include weddings and commitment ceremonies. In the long term, Communication revolves around maintaining the relationship by being constructive, sharing power, and staying connected. Love is a spontaneous feeling, and as such, it is purely a personal affair. It is an irresistible desire. Another way we make sense of our relationships with others is through turning points, which are perceptions of events that transform relationships. There are four major categories of turning points. Interpersonal, normative turning points occur when you evaluate yourself, your partner, or the relationship by standards of what is ideal and or norm. The second type of turning point is dyadic, which refers to direct interaction between you and your relationship partner. Dyadic turning points focus on the things you say and do to one another. Examples can include having your first big fight, exchanging I love you's, or saying this will never work out. Social network turning points occur when friends, family members, co-workers, or acquaintances influence the course of your relationship. Finally, 
Circumstantial turning points occur when events that are perceived as beyond your control and your partner's control influence the relationship. Illnesses, natural disasters, and relocations are unforeseeable events that may significantly alter the course of a relationship. The Relational Dialectics Theory is a groundbreaking analysis of interpersonal relationships that attributes the communication patterns between partners. In other words, it recognizes that all relationships can be messy and there's pushes and pulls that makes a relationship a relationship. There are three different dialects in this theory. The first dialect is autonomy and connectedness. Maintaining your own freedom and independence. I like to run by myself, okay? While simultaneously nurturing a close attachment to a partner. The second dialectical tension is novelty and predictability. People simultaneously desire new, exciting things and familiar, comfortable things. A relationship that lacks surprises and spontaneity Robin, I'm not happy. can feel boring and stale. On the other hand, a relationship that lacks predictability can feel unstable and unreliable. The third dialectical tension is openness and closeness, which highlights relationship partners' simultaneous needs to share personal information and to have privacy. Boundaries are necessary in any relationship, but sharing private information fosters greater intimacy. The differentiating stage is characterized by communication that asserts the separateness of relationship partners. Rather than emphasizing on joint identity, partners talk in ways that stress their individuality and distance from one another. In the circumscribing stage, communication moves from identifying differences to restricting the communication between partners. Partners may talk less and reveal less intimate information for fear of conflict. They may begin to lose interest in the relationship altogether. The next stage is stagnating, which compares the relationship to a still, lifeless pond. The quantity and quality of communication continues to decline. In addition, it is common for partners to experience and or express a sense of hopelessness about the relationship, saying things like, nothing's ever going to change, or talking about things is pointless. The next stage of relationship decline is avoiding. Here, partners extend their declining communication by physically and steering clear of one another. They may rearrange their schedules to see one another as little as possible and desire permanent physical distance through separation or divorce. Defensive communication is a major source of pollution to relational climates. Generally, it's made as an attempt to guard or protect yourself from an attack. However, it in itself is often an attack on the other. You may react defensively by attacking the critic, distorting the critical information, or avoiding it altogether. Termination is the final stage of the process of coming apart. Termination is a reversal of the bonding stage. A couple that were once joined publicly and formally end their relationship, often through the legal process of divorce. Termination signals the official end of the relationship. High quality interpersonal relationships and the sense of belonging that they create support positive student outcomes in several ways. They foster social, emotional, and academic development and healthy functioning. It's very important that students learn interpersonal communication. Teaching this will provide students the motivation and the skills necessary to understand and constructively manage the relationships within professional, social, and personal environments. So today we covered the basics of interpersonal communication. There is a lot to interpersonal communication, and each part is vital to understand to create good relationships in the workplace, with friends, or significant other.